I'm Eddie Watkins, a professor in the biology department at Colgate University, and we're down here in this uh, swampy area today to study one of the most spectacular natural phenomenons of color, and that's iridescence. I think even the most hardened naturalist will stop to admire the uh, fluttering butterf the morpho butterfly and the blue iridescent wings, uh, but most people don't realize that iridescence also occurs in plants. And Part of this iridescence issue has been studied, has inspired centuries of research to understand exactly why this, um, how this process occurs. And people have learned recently that it's primarily because of thin film interference, essentially an optical illusion that is structural in nature. A lot of people have worked on this trying to understand exactly how it occurs. Um, and we now know that the cells in many uh, plants are made in a very specific way with very thin uh, microfibril structures that are stacked on top of each other that interfere with, the, interfere with the visible light. So we now have a fairly good understanding of how iridescence happens in plants, but we don't really know uh, is why it happens. And we're very fortunate to have a series of very interesting ferns that have iridescence in their leaves. And Michael Britton, a student at Colgate University, is working on this project. He's actually leading this project up, looking at exactly why this is occurring. And I'll turn it over to Mike. I'm going to walk down the stream here and look for some more blue ferns, and Mike will take over and tell you more about our project here. So again, we know how the blue iridescence happens, but we're not exactly sure the purpose or why it has, this trait has evolved. Um, and that's what our study is all about. We have two hypotheses for the purpose of blue iridescence. The first is that it's for photo protection, that somehow the blue iridescence protects the ferns from high sunlight that could be damaging to, the, to their cells. The other uh, hypothesis is that they somehow create a more efficient photosynthesis by perhaps focusing the light or, create, or filtering certain wavelengths to provide um, more efficient photosynthesis. To test these hypotheses, we bring the Lycor out to my laboratory here in the field to bring them to the plants, which we can, unfortunately cannot bring back to the actual laboratory. We have three programs to test our hypotheses here. The first program is a general light curve, which can tell us a great many general aspects about the plant. First, it can tell us the maximum photosynthetic rate of the plant, which differences can um, show perhaps a more efficient um, photosynthesis with the blue plants. Um, it can also tell us at what light level the plant actually reaches its maximum photosynthetic rate. For if the blue iridescent plants reach their maximum photosynthetic rate at a lower light level, then that can show that they are somehow helping the plant in their photosynthesis. It also shows its respiration rate, and it also shows at what level photo inhibition happens, which is where the light is so high that it is actually damaging to the plant and it shuts down photosynthesis. Our second program looks at light stress, which tests our photo protection hypothesis. So within this program, we start the plant out in low light levels and then try and get a base photosynthetic rate. And then we increase the light to a damaging level of light and we can actually see within the program the photosynthetic rate drop off as the plant starts to shut down. After a certain period of time, we then bring the light level back down low and see how the plant recovers. A different recovery between green um, leaves and blue leaves which can occur on the same plant, can show the function of the blue iridescence and if it is in fact photoprotective. Within the forest, sunflecks are an extremely important occurrence. Now what a sunfleck is, is when the sun manages to penetrate the canopy and reaches the forest floor. And when this does happen, the photosynthetic rate of many of the understory plants can increase astronomically. Um, some estimates say that up to 90% of the carbon gain over a plant's lifetime can be attributed to photosynthesis occurring during sunflex. We have a program installed on the machine that tries to imitate sunflex. And what this does is it has light starting off at a low level, what might be typical for a understory plant, and then the light is increase to a level that a general sunflect may um, occur at. This sunflect is usually transient, so it only occurs for one minute within the program, and then it goes back down to the lower light level. And this repeats um, 10 times within the program 
to gauge the plant's response and whether the response changes over time. Hey Mike, I just found this great population of blue ferns down there. We have a lot more work to do, but what have we found so far with these preliminary data? What are you finding? Well, the three programs have yielded a lot of data on the plant. The light stress has shown that the blue iridescence is indeed photoprotective because um, at the recovery, not only do the blue leaves recover faster, but they recover to a greater extent. And with the sun flex, we found that um, blue leaves actually reach their maximum photosynthetic rate much quicker than the green leaves once a sun flex is initiated. Great, so both of our hypotheses have been validated so far. Indeed. Great, so that's what we're learning here with this blue fern project. And we're also running a really cool parallel per uh, series of experiments up in the canopy with another um, iridescent epiphytic fern, the Lafoglossum hermineri. And there, our hypotheses are a little bit different because you can imagine a low light situation that we are in here, the blue coloration might have a different function. Whereas up in the canopy where it's being blasted by light, you know, you may not want to focus the light so much on your chloroplast or may have a greater photoprotective role. So we're doing some other experiments on that. We're hopefully going to have a very nice study as soon as Mike finishes all this work.